Hello everyone and welcome back to a brand new video where today we return for rank 2 of our F122 Has Road to Glory Season 2 here from the Saudi Arabian GP. If you missed out on the video that went live at the end of last week, I would highly recommend going back and checking out, of course, the Bahrain Grand Prix, the season opener. And yeah, gonna gonna try and avoid spoilers for about five more seconds uh, before I tell you uh, what happened in that video because there is a little bit of story time and I feel like now, yeah, if you haven't gone back and checked it out, we're gonna get into it. We had a power unit failure, four laps into the Grand Prix. It ruined any hopes of a decent first race back in the Haas RTG. Of course, we focused towards the end of Season 1 on bringing the car up towards the front runners, ready for Season 2. Performance-wise, it looks like we should be there. We're between Red Bull, Ferrari uh, and Mercedes as well, just behind us. So we should be there fighting right at the very front. But... Yeah, I filmed that video before I went back out to Switzerland. Of course, I'm back now home in the UK. If you've been watching videos on my second channel, uh, LCRF2, would highly recommend going and checking out if you haven't already. But I mentioned uh, in that video that I'm not feeling 100% at the moment. But I was so annoyed with how that Bahrain Grand Prix went. I was originally going to be posting up a My Team video today. That's going to be coming out tomorrow alongside the podcast. I wanted to do another race in the Haas RTG where hopefully we can actually fight and make it to the checkered flag. So this race, I'll be honest here, is pretty much just because I'm quite mad at F122. But yeah, it means you're going to get an extra video uh, this week as well. So if you're new around here, please do make sure to leave a like, get yourself subscribed. My team will be returning tomorrow, like I said, alongside No One Wheel. Check out my second channel as well. We're almost up to 3k subs over there. But let's get into it though. Saudi Arabian Grand Prix here in Jeddah. Formula 1 is finally back in 2022 and now you can rep your favourite teams. Of course, using the F1 store, every team now has merch lineups available. Whether you're an Aston Martin fan, a Williams fan, Mercedes, Ferrari, Red Bull, the choice is completely up to you. But yeah, check out the F1 merch store down below for all the official releases from all of the teams. And of course, as always, if you use our links as well, you massively help support the channel. So yeah, give it a look and see if there's anything you like. Here we are then, back on the Jeddah Corniche Street circuit, here for Saturday night qualifying for the Saudi Arabian Grand Prix. Of course, one of the most difficult laps to try and get hooked up on F122. You really are hanging on throughout a lot of the corners, but it should suit this Haas car. Of course, we know how quick this thing can be down the straight. So we struggled a bit last weekend out in Bahrain, but we did learn a lot from it. And of course, yeah, heading here to Saudi Arabia. Want to try and come into more weekends this season. A bit more full of confidence, but we'll wait and see as to what we can do. Of course, actually made a mistake on our last qualifying run last weekend, but fingers crossed we can make it through this time nice and tidy. There is a lot of curb through turn three. Of course, really just trying to hang on through the S's there. Thread the car between the walls and the white lines. You can just see they're trying to use the curbing where we can make sure we don't do... Uh, what Nick Schumacher did, of course, one of the biggest and scariest crashes we've seen so far this year in Formula 1. Gatifi himself there sets a 131 flat, but we were a long way clear of that in practice. So we should be a long way clear of that on qualifying. Kevin Magnussen sets a good benchmark there of a 29-1. That's more what we're expecting to see from cars this evening. There is our Haas team actually quicker than George Russell in his Mercedes. So fingers crossed now we have got a car that can fight right at the very front there, but through the final corner. Make sure we don't do what the Stapper did last year at the final turn. They'll open up the DRS. Esteban Ocon goes to the top of the timing sheets, but we're going to go even quicker. One second quicker than Esteban Ocon there. We'll have that. Thank you very much. Well, less than a minute left on the clock, and there's about three tenths of a second covering myself, both Red Bulls and both Ferraris here. But could we be on for our first pole position of the year? After the heartbreak that was the uh, Bahrain Grand Prix, of course, we didn't have particularly good qualifying pace last weekend. Now, Kevin Magnussen is only about four tenths away as well. 30 seconds left on the timer as we cross the line. But are we going to see other cars improve? And hopefully we won't crack under the pressure there. We'll throw the car through the first chicane once more. Try and get on the throttle nice and tidy at the first couple of turns. They're losing a little bit of time. But we know we were a little bit sloppy through these next couple of corners last time around. They get close to the wall. As you dare try and keep the nose. Oh, a little bit wide there. We've definitely compromised ourselves through this first sector. 
We really did nail the first part of the lap on our last run, but we are still finding a bit of time there. Purple apparently through sector one. Despite the fact we're down in the red there is a bit of understeer through the banking of turn 12. Get the car up towards the wall on the exit. And are we going to see anyone else improve? Could our first run have actually locked us in for pole position here as we try and tip two wheels out over the curbing as we head around the back half of the lap there. Of course, you've got the S's. They're really not that far away on the other side of the circuit. But yeah, it does make you feel a very, very different kind of racetrack to what you're used to there. Not as brave out through the fast chicane. They're probably one of the most difficult corners in Formula 1. That combination there, of course, where we bottled it in the My Team career. Mo, but down in towards the final corner, though, of this Saudi Arabian GP qualifying session. I think we have done enough for pole anyway, but are we just going to improve only car into the 27s? We are going to find another 10th then as we cross the line. It is pole position here in Saudi Arabia. That's exactly what we wanted. Fantastic way after the heartbreak last weekend. Well, look at that then. Pole position here in Saudi Arabia. Of course, not our first pole of the Haas Road to Glory there, but Sainz did dip into the 27s in the end, so it's not going to be an easy plain sailing race for us. Carlos Sainz right there. Perez and Verstappen not far away either. And Charles Leclerc, I'm sure, a bit gutted down in P5. K-Mag, of course, on his return to Formula 1 up in sixth place. They're ahead of our three fellow Brits there. Norris ahead of both Mercs. But let's get into it, though. Saudi Arabian GP. We had a horrible race last... Well, I don't even think we can call it a race last weekend. Let's try and get the team some well-earned points. This channel is proudly sponsored by Bybit, the official crypto partner of Red Bull's Formula 1 team. I've been using their platform for my personal crypto savings over the last few months, and when they got in touch to support the channel, I was super, super excited. Currently, they're offering you guys a special new promo for the first 100 of you to deposit $10 or more onto the platform. You'll get another $10 free. Also, five lucky winners will get their initial deposit doubled up to $1,000. That means if you deposited $1,000 onto the platform using my codes below, you could be within a chance to get another $1,000 completely free. We've seen the landscape around crypto drastically change over the last couple of years and I genuinely believe it holds an important place in our future. However, please be careful as always when trading as you are liable uh, to lose money. But if you're interested and you're 18 or older, click the link down below to get started and see why Red Bull and myself as well as thousands of others trust Bybit as their crypto. So here we are then, welcoming you today to one of the jewels of the Arab world, Jeddah. One of the biggest cities in Saudi Arabia, second only to Riyadh, gateway to Mecca and one of the biggest ports in the region. And now, host to the Saudi Arabia Grand Prix. So let's take a look at the topographical map of the Jeddah Street Circuit. As you can see, a number of challenging corners for the drivers to master here. We'll see just how much the teams have benefited from their time spent in practice this weekend. And like many street circuits, this track has the potential to punish drivers that get it wrong. Let's hope we avoid any safety cars today. Let's run you through the driver grid order for today's exciting race. Mr. Monaco lines up on pole position, and a very happy Carlos Sainz will start second. Considering the rest of the grid, we have Perez, Verstappen, Charles Leclerc, and Magnussen, Norris, Russell, Hamilton, and Daniel Ricciardo, Albon, Sonoda, Esteban Ocon, and Gasly, Vettel, Stroll, Guan Yu Zhou, and Valtteri Bottas, Mick Schumacher, and Nicholas Latifi. Now it's almost time for lights out, so let's go down to the track. Anthony Davidson joins me once again in the commentary box, and it's fantastic to have you with us here, but I'm curious, as a man with experience out on the track, how do you stop those pre-race nerves from becoming overwhelming when you're lining up on the grid? Well, I imagine they'll be starting to feel the adrenaline as they anticipate the rundown into Turn 1, a bit like preparing to go into battle. The unknown situation will bring nerves, but that's a good thing. It will keep them focused on the moment and on their surroundings as we build towards the start of the Grand Prix. 
Right, well here we are then, on the grid, ready here in Saudi Arabia. Round two of the year, and safe to say we've had some highs, we've had some lows. Not often have I had a mechanical failure and then a pole position on F1. Well, in fact, it's never happened actually on F1 22, uh, that we've had it back to back. It might have happened a couple of times on F1 2021. I will never forget the final few races on that game. In both the Williams RTG and my team, uh, where I think we got like five mechanical failures in our last eight races. It really was trying to script things again. Us. But you guys often ask for setups, click and watch it slowly uh, if that's what you're interested in. I might try and do a full video uh, over on my Clips channel sort of discussing the setups that I run on F122. But medium hard is the way to go around the uh, the Jeddah Corny Street circuit. But yeah, 25 laps ahead of us tonight. Like I said, we deserved points last weekend. I felt like we had quite a good strategy uh, underneath okay, us as well. So yeah, we'll wait and see what we can do tonight, even if it's not the win. We can just get a good podium, maybe some just solid points. I think really what we want to be asking is, can I make it to the chequered flag? Problem with starting at the front of the field is we've got a long, long time to wait for the likes of Nicholas Atifi right at the very back, but it does give us a chance to try and put some heat into the tyres. Never quite understood why people weave around the entire lap when really it only matters out of the final corner. But yeah, just waiting on those final few cars then to line up at the rear of the grid. There we go, pretty okay, beautiful actually nice on the lineup. The Mark very, very happy with that as well as we get ready then for the start. The Saudi Arabian okay, so GP, 25 laps ahead of us here patient. tonight. So Fingers crossed we can try and get a good run down in towards Stun 1 there. I'm pretty certain it's Latifi at the back of the grid. It usually is on this game. Five red lights here in Jeddah. And it is going to be lights out and away we go. And actually not oh, a lot of wheel spin in the second phase. Their contact in fact. Between myself and Sergio Perez, who tried to go down the middle, as we'll try and hook it up around the outside of Carlos Sainz. There's a tiny bit of wheel banging between myself and the Spaniard as well as we head out of turn two there. But Sergio Perez has got a much better launch than both cars in the front row there, and he will sadly not be able to capitalise on that. Looks like Leclerc has moved past Max Verstappen there. There's just no confidence in the car at the start here. We struggled, if I remember correctly, last weekend as well uh, in Bahrain early on, trying to get heat into the tyres there as well as Carlos Sainz. Just going to try and wave off into the distance there. Looks like Verstappen has been able to re-overtake Charles Leclerc. So I can only guess that they were side by side through the S's. But look at the understeer as we head out of turn 12 as well. I really have just... I mean, this car struggles with tyre warm-up. And maybe I did jinx myself uh, by saying what I said on the run-up to the grid there. Perhaps you do need to try and work a bit more temperature into the tyres around the lap. But luckily, of course, we've got plenty of battery early on there to make sure... We stay within the one second zone, and this Haskar really is super fast down the straight. So, if we try and thread our way in towards the final sector, gotta make sure we keep that gap under one second to Carlos Sainz at the front of the field. And currently, he's floating at about eight or nine tenths down. But yeah, I mean, the, the straight line speed of this thing is just ferocious on F122 anyway. Whoa! Was not expecting that though out of the final corner. Somehow, managed to get the car stopped there. It's Charles Leclerc and Max Verstappen get a little bit caught out behind us, so Sergio Perez will inherit P2 then by the end of that one. Somehow we kept it out of the wall, as here comes the Dutchman, back in towards the one. They're clearly not happy with me. We'll fight it till the bitter end, and we will hang on then to P3 of the Grand Prix there, but already we're causing quite a big train at the start of this race, but how on earth I kept that out of the wall? I'm very, very impressed with myself, but not only did we keep it with a whole front wing, but we also only lost the one spot. It's grazing the wall through the next couple of corners, though. We are not confident early on in this race. We got yellow flags out. Someone's got issues. Oh, it's one of the Aston Martins. What have they managed to do? That's a very odd place to make a mistake. Well, I don't quite know then what's happened to Sebastian Bethel early on in this Grand Prix. Whether he's had a, I think he has had a mechanical failure. But yeah, very very slow there. Out of the fast chicane. Yeah, Sebastian Vettel then I think is out. Or oh, he's got a puncture. No, he must be out, I think, of the Grand Prix. There we go. Official confirmation. Sebastian Vettel out here in Saudi. Seems like it took him a long time to decide there. Maybe Esther Martin were trying to do an alt-control delete on his car. But yeah, Seb out. Our first retirement of the day. And luckily for us, we've been able to stay within the DRS range of Sergio Perez in front there. We're both actually taking good time out of Carlos Sainz, so Sainz might have been at the right place at the right time on lap one, but he might not be playing sailing for the Spaniard, like I think he would have hoped for. 
but yellow flags out down at the final corner means we're not really going to be able to do anything on Sergio Perez. Yeah, there is Sebastian Vettel's Aston Martin tucked on the inside of the circuit. He did a pretty good job there trying to get that thing parked, but yeah, hopefully we can try and make a move work on Checo. Just see how fast we are back down towards them on there to the outside of the Red Bull. So much speed means we're going to have to be a bit earlier though on the brakes as Checo just parks it there and we pick up a little bit of damage. Oh, that damage is definitely compromising us a bit through the higher speed sections. Of course, yeah, that chicane we've just gone through and the S is in sector one, but I don't think it's going to completely ruin our afternoon there. We're certainly not going to try and box much earlier than we'd originally anticipated to try and get the front wing sorted, but we probably will change the wing in the pit stops. You can see again that we're going to be able to get a big run on Checo, and of course he's got the DRS as well on Carlos Sainz. This car is just a rocket ship down the straights as once again Perra is going to be later on the brakes. But this time around we hold firm and swing the car in front of the Red Bull because I think Max Verstappen's just pulled off a move on Charles Leclerc behind. The top three really are breaking away here as that's the corner where I really struggle. Lap 5 of 25 though, still a long old way to go this afternoon. I'm pretty certain they've moved the DRS slightly back through this third, well, technically, is it the final DRS zone or is it the second DRS zone? I don't really know, but yeah, it feels like it's moved slightly on F122. Every time we go through, I seem to be pressing the activation a little bit earlier than it really is. But yeah, now we've been able to leave Checo behind just a little bit. The pace has been unrelenting on Carlos Sainz at the front of this grid. Of course, he's definitely got a bit more downforce than myself, but... Yeah, it feels like we really have got the car set up nailed this with this weekend in a way we just never quite were able to work out last time out in Bahrain as Kevin Magnussen I think locked in the battle as well a bit further back. It'll be nice to see the Dane all oh, fight right at the very front this season. So just nudge the wall again. Here we go then, end of lap seven, quite close to Carlos Sainz as we head out the final corner. The Ferrari sparking away just in front of us, but will the Spaniard be able to do anything? He's going to try and squeeze me down to the wall, but look at that! 210 miles an hour as we try and spot our braking point down at turn one there. Sainz, though, will try and do and stay ahead there, but we do a cheeky up and under on him, read him like a book out of the first couple of turns there, and we will now, for the first time since the start, retake the lead of the Saudi Arabian Grand Prix there, despite the fact we've got a bit of front wing damage. I'm still definitely going to change that wing when we do box, because I just don't want to make any big mistakes later on in the afternoon that potentially exacerbate the issue. As well, I think Sainz there made a bit of an issue. Now Checo coming at the Spaniard as well as we head down through turn 12 there and just starting to struggle a bit with understeer. But this has been an instant lifeline for us there as Checo somehow squeezes that Red Bull car right around the outside of his big rival. And that is going to break us instantly out of the DRS zone. That has worked out beautifully. Well, in the back of Sainz v Perez, it looks like Carlos has been able to get the upper ground for now. But that is also meant because of all their battling. Max Verstappen and Charles Leclerc now back within the one second zone of both of those cars. And I mean, if Sainz can take another couple of tenths out of me, it could be that the top five once more are tucked up in a DRS train. Here is all steady on that. No idea where I was planning on trying to go there. Making the track as short as possible as through the final corner. Probably going to box at the end of next lap, though in this race, and I'm just trying to think the front wing damage might shuffle us back behind the Dutchman, but like I said, the last thing I want to do is make a mistake that's going to make the front wing damage even worse if I don't change it, so although we might have the pace to hang on, I'd much rather be comfortable and be attacking. And there we go, Carlos Sainz has been able to get back inside the GRS range, of course, because we've lost that bit of front wing. It does mean that the tyre wear has been slightly worse, and I feel like the fronts are beginning just to overheat a little bit as we head through the final corner. They're just understeering out towards those Aramco signs at the final turn. We've got to be really careful as we head into the pit lane here. Make sure we don't dip a wheel over the white lines. Apparently found that out the hard way uh, in the F2 series, but let's see them when we re-emerge in this Grand Prix. Looks like one of the McLarens had a bit of a disaster early on in this race, and it is, yeah, Daniel Ricciardo. So probably not many people surprised there, but yeah, hopefully just try and get a clean pit stop, 7.4 to 7.7. 7.7 is going to be the answer, even slower than that. So we are going to re-emerge only ahead of our old teammate Mick Schumacher and of course Nicholas Satifi 
down in last place, but yeah, those show why I knew Daniel Ricciardo was all just struggling to put the heat into these hard tyres, but now we're going to hopefully, once we've got them up to scrub, have a lot more grip. Well, most cars should be able to, at the very least, go half distance in this form. Pretty bit Daniel Ricciardo and I think Lance Stroll, it must be both into the pit lane. Their promoters back into P15. Hopefully, once we've got past Joe Guan Yu, there's going to be a bit of free track space up to his teammate Bottas. But of course, it's going to be another couple of laps before some cars into the pit lane. I just want as little dirty air as possible. So you can see practically pushing Joe Guan Yu along as we head through this next section of the racetrack. Let's try and just dial the car in clean and tidy. And now we'll have the DRS range, of course. It's probably one of the worst DRS zones in Formula 1. Because, of course, as the track moves around, you never quite know which way the other car's going to go. But we found a way around Zhou Guan Yu this time round. Team loving that one. And, yeah, that, it, it can often be quite scary trying to navigate your way through there. As we should hopefully have enough straight line speed against Zhou Guan Yu as we head down into all the final corners. We've got one Ferrari, one Red Bull into the pit lane. Not too sure which ones it is. But should give us a good idea of how much time we're going to try and recover in the second half of this Grand Prix. The pit stop wasn't particularly tidy, but we will be back up inside the top ten. It is Verstappen and Leclerc, so it's the cars that were behind. And they're still going to be a long way ahead of us then by the time they re-emerge. They're about three seconds ahead. So we are certainly going to have our work cut out in the second half of this GP, but I'm going to keep my head down, keep focused. This is definitely not over. We have got so much top-end speed in this car, but there is a lot of free time to be had down the straights. There we go, find a few cars into the pit lane, so this should give us a rough idea then where we're going to re-emerge in this form Prix. I mean, it should be P5, despite anything strange going on. It's Alex Albon there, of course, in his Alpine, having quite a good run of it. His new fastest lap of the day definitely goes to show we have got the pace there. As Perez now has actually been jumped by Charles Leclerc, so Ferrari suddenly have got a 1-2 in this race. How on earth have they managed that? I can only assume Checo made an error will get held up in the pit lane. Ferrari actually making a good strategy call. Who would have seen that coming? Oh, Checo, big lockup down at turn one there. That might leave Verstappen vulnerable off the corner. Not quite able to do anything this time round, but we've got both Red Bulls now squabbling. Both Ferraris at the road as well. Trying to duke it out for the race lead. So this just works out beautifully for us. Of course, we're probably going to be the only one here that's got no team orders, of course, after the disappointment last weekend. We may as well just put it all on the line here in Saudi Arabia. Team say we've got plenty of battery as well, I must admit. It's one big thing I've noticed so far about this car in Season 2. It's certainly got a good battery storage now, as you can see the Stappen kicking out the back end of that Red Bull. Got to use all of those Pirelli tyres. The team have paid for them, so may as well take all the grip off them if you can. There's all a little bit of a second guessing ourselves as we head out of the S's. But a lot of the AI today He's been very, very aggressive in the traction zones, and it has meant they've compromised themselves top end speed wise. You can see round the outside of the Dutchman, not going to be able to make anything happen there. But Verstappen tries to just keep it between the white lines there, gets a little bit out of shape. Round the outside will go, and that was not exactly where I was expecting to make a move. Never mind on Max Verstappen of all people. They're back up into P4 of this from three. There is Perez as once more. Just thinking of it a bit of a lifeline, a little bit of breathing room once again. But yeah, like I said, Slugs and Leclerc at the front of the field juking out. I wonder if they're just being told to hold position at the moment. No, they are definitely not. I think that's Leclerc having a look to the outside of Sainz back at turn one. And it looks like he might have just pulled it off there side by side out of the first couple of corners. Watch the gap at the top left hand side of the screens there. Just above my face. Come down to Charles Leclerc there. It's going to be side by side into the S's as well. This is not what Ferrari need early on in this campaign there as you can already see they've lost over a second almost immediately and we're not even that good through the s's in this car still and you can just see now Sergio Perez back within one second of them we're just on the cusp of Checo so suddenly we could be in for a five car scrap once again out of the final corner Sykes and Leclerc still duking it out though as this is just perfect for myself and the Red Bulls there looks like the Stappen has just dipped outside DRS range. How much speed have we got on Checo Perez as we head down towards turn one there? Charles Leclerc, first time today, I think, into the lead properly now as we head through the S's, but yeah, this is just working wonders. Here we go then on Sergio Perez, closing up 
So we head down in towards the final corners as Leclerc again having to go defensive from Carlos Sainz there. The Ferraris are really tripping over each other and now we've got four cars nose to tail as we head out of the final corner here and look at the speed. We may as well just have a missile on this car there as we get past Perez. We might be able to get past both Ferraris as well as we go three wide back down towards someone there. Big, big lockup as we head through the first corner. Contact with Checo through turn one. We'll keep the position ahead of Sergio. I was not really too sure what else we could have done there. Felt like he kind of crashed into me as we were heading through the next couple of corners. But sight somehow back into the lead of the Grand Prix there as we get a big wobble through the next couple of corners as the car loads up through the front and then goes really, really light at the rear. And that's exactly what I mean there. Another big wobble. Sergio Perez will say thank you very much. Ferrari suddenly will have a one second lead again. This is just so topsy-turvy at the moment. We are throwing this car around trying to hang on on a knife edge. What is going on with this Haas car? I mean, this car, there's no doubt about it, it is fast, but tonight here in Jeddah, it really wants to try and kill me there. As look at that around the outside of Sergio Perez. We'll wave goodbye to the Mexican once again, and we're not quite going to be within the range of those two Scarlet Ferraris at the front. And again, we should have the straight line speed out in the final corner, despite Checker with the battery. But getting in on the Ferraris as we head back down towards them on there. Of course, we've got identical power units to them. As Sainz there tries to muscle his way to the inside. Leclerc holds firm once again, though, out of turn one. And again, they're just continuing to trip over each other. I'm loving the fact that Tia Bonotto is letting his two cars race there as Leclerc and Sainz. There's good racing respect between the pair of them, but I'm sure neither of them are particularly happy. There's all contact between them as we head through the next couple of corners. We have to slam on the anchors as Leclerc gets out of shape. We get another warning. I, I'm not really too sure what we can do at the moment. Apparently, yeah, the stewards are not my biggest fans, but can we try and work our way back to the lead here? It's going to have to be a chess-style move. We've got to think three moves ahead. And I think sensibly what we're going to have to try and do is get a good run out in the final corner there as Sainz muscles his way, uh, sorry, Leclerc muscles his way to the inside of Sainz down in towards the final turn there. We just had nowhere to go, didn't want to get hung out on the outside. Can we try and put the power down out in the final corner though? Look at this. Again there, that's going to be one Ferrari and that's going to be two as we head back down towards turn one there. Three wide, very briefly. Whoa! Carlos Sainz there, no chill, sends it back up the inside through turn one there. We hang Charles Leclerc out to dry, but we have to basically avoid the Spaniard through the first corner. And now we've got five cars covered by about a second here in Saudi Arabia. We've got yellow flags out further back. I think that's one of the mercs, potentially with some issues. Should be good for Kevin Magnussen there as not. I think it's Lando Norris who's fallen to the wayside then. So the second McLaren failure of the year, the third for Mercedes power. We've got other things to worry about in the moment, like how can we get this for our power car? Safety car! We can't pit at this stage of the day. I think we might, well, I don't know, someone else out of the Grand Prix as well? We've still got 18 runners. Yeah, it's very odd to be a safety car, but we can't afford to box late on. But this is certainly going to spice things up. I, I had completely forgot that I still had the cinematic safety car enabled in this series. Of course, we got rid of that a long, long time ago uh, in uh, the My Team career mode, but we haven't often had safety cars, actually, uh, in the Haas Road to Glory. Carlos Sainz leads the way, then, ahead of myself and Sergio Perez, of course, Checo Championship leader after his win last weekend out in Bahrain, so we desperately need to make sure that we beat him. Charles Leclerc, Verstappen, George Russell, there, Kevin Magnussen, and Mercedes Sandwich in a P7 there as Albon and Ocon rounding out the top 10, but yeah, I, I had completely forgot about this safety car, so I, I guess we can sit back and relax for a minute or two. Well, it's given me... Okay, let's get ready to go racing again. I mean, if that doesn't go to show how desperately the safety car on this game needs work, the, this simulation one that they want to try and implement, I don't know what else will there. We can barely avoid sights on the brakes. I mean, often, like I said, if I have to rewind, I do show you guys, and that is certainly a prime example of that, but get ready to go green then out of the final corner. Three laps to go here in Saudi Arabia. They haven't really given us much space in the safety car, but Sainz going to try and bolt it then at the final corner. We'll go one way, we'll go the other on the Spaniard as we head back down towards turn one. But again, Sainz, of course, going to carry the confidence through the first turn there. And to be honest, I'm quite happy that the... Uh, the 
more seat. Oh, I can't even remember the name of it. The fun safety car, or whatever they wanted to dub it, hasn't actually completely screwed us in this race. But yeah, Sainz still leading the way then. He's going to try and bolt off this restart as again, starts and restarts are not our strong point in this Haas car. It does not build up tyre temperature particularly well. But we have broken free from Perez and Leclerc behind us as the Dutchman. That's Verstappen. Can't seem to make much of an impact off this restart. Two laps to go then here in Jeddah and it does look like it's going to be myself versus Carlos Sainz then for the race of victory. Perez, Leclerc, Verstappen all just tripping over each other a bit late on in the day but will it be Ferrari getting their first win of the year on the board or will it be Haas? Of course both teams now got race victories in Formula 1. I think you could argue still that one of them has a bit more history uh, than the other within the sport. And, you know, Ferrari, they'll give them some time and they'll certainly build up some reputations uh, in Formula 1. But yeah, we just got to try and hang close to Carlos. Then, of course, DRS will be enabled for the final lap there. And that's how hard we're pushing on cold rubber. We've got to keep this thing in a straight line, first and foremost, if we want any chance of winning. Final lap then of the Saudi Arabian Grand Prix. We're only going to get two bites of the cherry here, of course, because Carlos Sainz only... Well, of course, we didn't get the DRS on him out of the first turn. But, yeah, I mean, what can we do on this final lap? We're still nearly a second back. I mean, he's trying to get within the range of the Spaniard and try and use the last of the battery pack as well. Of course, Carlos Sainz has led throughout a lot of this afternoon there. Was not under much pressure early on in the Grand Prix, but yeah, Charles Leclerc managed to get a big undercut, and that kind of dragged both Ferraris back into everyone else's clutches here, but I'll be a bit too far away on the final lap here in Jeddah. We just need to try and get a good run out of here, but of course, can't afford to take big risks through that corner. We will get the DRS, though, on Carlos Sainz, but will it be enough? We've seen just how phenomenal the straight line speed has been all day today in this car. There. You can see Sainz having to save battery as he heads through the final corner. Has he just used a bit too much on this final lap? I don't think we're going to get enough there. Carlos Sainz trying to save, save, save up to the line. But he's going to do it. Sainz is the winner here in Jeddah. Well, Carl, good finish. We stepped up and achieved what we are. Good job. winner pulling their Ferrari into Park Ferme after a fantastic race. Tell me Ant, how do they manage to achieve this win? I think it was clear what the main contributing factor out on track was, speed. I know it sounds like an awfully reductive statement, but fast cars win races and we saw that today with our winner. are a team that is no stranger to the podium taking their place on top once again a sublime race today and a stunning win for Ferrari Let's have a look then at the driver's standings. Well, it wasn't the best weekend for our championship leader and their advantage at the top has been reduced. Well, after an incredible day of racing, who was your driver of the day, Ant? I have to give it to Mr Monaco. They did a great job at getting the most out of their tyres without losing pace, something that's a very handy skill to have in modern day Formula One. It's time to see how things are shaping up in the Constructors' Championship. No change in the top spot then, but with today's points, their hold on that lead is getting weaker. It was also a strong Grand Prix from Haas F1 this weekend. Fantastic work from the American team to move themselves further up the table. Well, what an end to another fantastic weekend of racing. Thanks to everyone who joined us, and we'll see you for the next one. Well, there we are then, the final race results here from Saudi Arabia. And to be honest, I had kind of forgot, actually, 
uh, that we were on about a four lap uh, undercut on Carlos Sainz there, so no surprise that we struggled a bit with tyres towards the end of the Grand Prix there. The Spaniard will get his first win of the year on the board, and so far, yeah, it really has been uh, the season of the number twos there. Sergio Perez once more uh, beating out Max Verstappen there, and Charles Leclerc down in P5. Kevin Magnussen, sixth place there, means both Haskars up inside the top six, proving uh, what we couldn't quite prove last weekend out in Bahrain there. Norris and Vettel, the only two cars not to make it to the checkered flag this weekend. Let's have a look at the Drivers' Championship then. Sergio Perez still leads the way there, three points clear of now Carlos Sainz. Max Verstappen uh, just behind Charles Leclerc there, P4 and P3. We leapfrog all the way up into P5. There is Hamilton and George Russell tied on 12 points apiece. There's Kevin Magnussen on 10 just behind the head of Albon and Lando Norris. Further down the order, I mean, only 11 cars have scored after the opening two race weekends. So it really is just Alpine, Mercedes, Haas, Red Bull, Ferrari uh, that seem to have the pace there, and maybe McLaren if they stop bottling it. Constructors-wise, though, we leapfrog our way all the way up into P3 overall. Ferrari just two points behind Red Bull, though, after the opening couple of weekends. That's the fight we want to be trying to get involved in later on this year there, but it's going to take a lot of work to try and get up towards the front. But thank you all so much for watching this video. If you have enjoyed, please do make sure you leave a like, get yourself subscribed as well, and we will return very, very soon with more. F122 content. None of these videos would be possible without the help of our channel members. So a massive thank you to all of the names you see on your screens currently for helping support the channel. You can join them by clicking the join button down below. And yeah, thank you once again to everyone that continues all the insane support on my work.